Hey there, this video is going to show you how to check your body paragraphs. All right, so this is where we left off, setting up writing our body paragraphs. We have our essay map sentences, which are the foundation for everything we do. All right, so what I did was I underlined all of those sentences. So when I have my new sentences in the body, they are okay. You can tell the difference, so we can talk about them better. All right, look at how flipping long these body paragraphs are. They're very, very long, and that's exactly what you need. If you have that typical fifth grade paragraph structure that only has five sentences, you're not doing your job because right now, sophomore in high school and older, you really have to build emotion in your audience and you really have to build understanding in your audience. This is something important to you. You have to make it important to me. If you are only glazing over general pieces of information about this person, you are not doing anything for your reader. This stranger who has never met your person needs to feel close to this person. And you have to craft that closeness with your words. So yeah, your paragraphs are gonna be super long and um, you'll get more and more comfortable with that. Okay, so. I am going to share mine with you and then um, pause it for yourself when you need to. That way you can do the same thing with yours. If yours is on, is on a different doc, um, open that document. So no matter where it is, just open your document now so you can pause this when you need to and do these actions. All right. So my first main idea sentence from my essay map was from a very early age the author has shown compassion toward everyone and everything she sees all right so now how you check it is you are looking for a balance there needs to be as many snapshots that we can imagine and point to like evidence as there is explanation why it even matters all right so let's see Animals and their quiet grace and mystery were her first source of inspiration. In fact, so that's not evidence. Like, that's just me talking. That's an opinion of mine. I'm not showing a snapshot of anything. In fact, her first word and favorite sign to use was bug. So you can imagine my adorable little daughter <laughs> saying bug, bug, bug. I can just see that. That's a snapshot right there. A small snippet from my memories with her. Everywhere she went, she would make her tiny self even smaller and look for every bug there was. Yeah, that's something I can see. So I'm gonna highlight that. Never was anything scary to her just because she was encountering it for the first time. That's an opinion. That's something that I am bringing to this body paragraph. That's not a snapshot. I can't point to that. So at two years old, Leander began to give voices to every animal figurine she played with as she learned their names and gave them histories with architectures of couch cushions and kitchen gadgets. You can see that I have made you see that. My words have made you see an image and that's what writing is about. That's how you get power. She began seeking out animals and talking to them as she held them and stroked them as a cartoon character would, whether it was a praying mantis, our cats, a hummingbird, or a hissing cockroach. So she would talk to them and hold them. She began seeking them out. Yeah, maybe you can picture that, but I think the more vivid image is being with these animals, just stroking them and talking to them. She loved and protected them all and everyone became a piece of her happiness. That is me, That's I'm interpreting it. I'm explaining it. I'm making meaning out of it for my reader. So I don't highlight that, that's not evidence. There were never boundaries to her creativity either. The sand on the playground would transform into water daily as she and her friends played mermaids. Yeah, so the creativity thing, there were never boundaries, that's my interpretation. That's my feeling, that's my thought associated with it. That's not an image, that's not evidence. However, I don't know if any of you ever did this, but <laughs> you can imagine uh, the sand in a playground being like water for mermaids. Kids are very creative. Every bath had to include a lecture through smiles and giggles as we washed all the sound, sand out of her hair from her mermaid adventures. Yep. 
that's also something I can see. As she grew older, she moved toward developing scripts, stories, and art, and making videos to bring them to life. She and her brother still create, oh, yeah, scripts, stories, art, videos. She and her brother still create short videos that make us roll in laughter. Yep. Yana's happiness comes from the smile she can create and the peace she can bring for everyone and everything. That's totally my interpretation. That's nothing I can show you. I'm showing you through my examples, but that sentence doesn't show you. As she has begun to embrace the, pow embrace the power of the spoken word to bring about justice, the honor has moved into using knowledge and creative problem solving to promote human rights, dignity, and diplomacy. That's just my interpretation. I am explaining the value of this. She has the ability to speak to anyone without shutting down possibilities for peaceful understanding. Compassion drives Leandra's creative spirit, and this ethical force has led her to kindle rich relationships with both strangers and friends. All right. So this one, I want you to be very careful. I'm going to change the text color to blue, and this is why. Um, your concluding sentence cannot be talking about your last piece of evidence. If your concluding sentence is still talking about the last piece of evidence, you do not have a concluding sentence in that paragraph. So that concluding sentence is taking your evidence, your main idea, to the next level. So why is this important, basically? So why do, do all of those things matter? Because compassion drives Leandra's creative spirit, and this ethical force has led her to kindle rich relationships with both strangers and friends. All of that stuff matters because she applies it to her life to make her relationships more rich and beautiful. So I have made meaning of everything. I didn't say, and so that's why she's compassionate. And I don't repeat my sentence from the beginning. I make it matter. And so check your concluding sentences. And if you need to add a concluding sentence, you just realize you don't have one, then do so now. I also want to look at the structure of this. Look how much yellow. There's tons of evidence. But between every example, there's something that is an assertion. There's something where I'm explaining, where I'm interpreting the evidence for you. I don't just leave evidence with my reader and guess that they're going to do the right thing with it. So I need to make sure they do the right thing with it. I need to make sure they're thinking the right way with it. So I need to give them the thought. So if you have a bunch of yellow together and no clear spaces where you're just talking about that, then you need to add explanations. If you have mostly clear spaces and not much yellow where you have things to imagine, then you need to add more evidence. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the second paragraph. So um, go ahead and, oh, and look here. Also, I want to point out, you'll notice that there's a lot less yellow highlight for the end because that's when your lawyer skills come in sometimes. You need to spend time with all of these images you've put in your reader's heads and you have to just get them to develop the emotion. So now you go from understanding to emotional connection. You are manipulating your reader's thoughts and feelings this whole time. You have so much power with your words, so use them. All right, you can pause this now. Um, you could actually stop this now if, you, if you're good. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do the next body paragraph. So my topic sentence was, not only is she loving, but Leandra is also able to keep pushing on, even through huge obstacles. All right. We first took note of this when she was five. So that's not something I can point to. That's just something I'm setting you up. On Easter day, Leandra punctured her right eye through and through with an open pair of kitchen scissors. You can imagine that. As her parent, I did not know if I could survive it, but Leandra never seemed to be phased. That's not something you can imagine. That's something I am doing to build your connection, to build your emotion about this. She endured three surgeries, each more terrifying than the last. So we have the surgeries part is evidence. You, you know that. I can... I can make a film of that, right? But each more terrifying than the last is not evidence. 
So when you are looking for evidence, you won't be highlighting your whole sentence. I would look for ways to leave the house and cry. And meanwhile, Leandro was continuing to play and developing a love of reading through long stints in waiting rooms. All of that is something oh, I'm gonna start tearing up right now as I'm making this video. <laughs> All right. So we had long waits in waiting rooms and that's how she grew to love to read because we would read books together. And so um, she was just, she really always smiled. She was always protecting us from worrying about her rather than accepting her sorrow and unfair situation like others might. So that's not something I can point to. That's my explanation. That's my interpretation. I'm building connection. I'm building emotion. Not only does Leandra have a knack to keep on keeping on, but she looks around and makes sure everyone else is with her. This altruism has led her down some difficult paths, including a mental health scare that resulted in a one week stay at an inpatient care facility. I've already asked her if it's okay if I share this and she said yes. So all of that stuff building up to it is just my interpretation, my connection. I'm guiding you through my thinking. This one little part, that's the evidence. I could film a one week stay at an inpatient care facility. I can give you snapshots of that. But Leonda learns moves on and uses her past to build a more complete version of herself. That's my thinking, that's not my evidence. After that experience, she jumped back into school and took AP Psychology. Yep, that's something I can point to. Instead of running away from those memories, she harnessed them, added them to new endings and applied them to enrich her world. So that's why it matters. That's why that piece of evidence matters. Your reader should never go through your body paragraph and not know why something you said matters. She saves lives on a regular basis, putting her own needs behind everyone else's, but she has also learned to ask for help and to be reflective in ways that build courage and worthiness rather than ways that can tear people up. Her struggles have made her especially qualified to help others who are struggling, and Leandra carefully tends to those gifts. She is constantly becoming stronger while helping others become stronger too. All right, so this is going to be blue. Now what I'm noticing about this one is that when I read my topic sentence, not only is she loving, but Leandra is also able to keep pushing on even through huge obstacles. She is constantly becoming stronger while helping others become stronger too. Okay, yeah, that makes it matter. I thought I had made it so it doesn't sound like I'm talking about the same main idea again. So double check your concluding sentence. Are you still talking about that same main idea? Are you making that main idea matter? If you're not, or if you're missing a concluding sentence because you're still talking about AP psychology, then um, add a concluding sentence. Why does this matter for her, for her present, for her future, for our future, for our relationship? There's something that you are making important to your reader and there's a slim chance your reader still hasn't figured it out. So let them know. Okay, so that's how you check your body paragraphs. You can do this. <laughs>